So today we are working with the law of sines. Now the great thing about the law of sines is it works with any kind of triangle, not just right triangles. Because typically when we use trigonometry and just regular sine, we have to have a right triangle so we can use the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. For the law of sines, we can do it with any triangle. And here's how it works. Let's say you're given any triangle. Label the vertices A, B, and C. All right. Now. The side across from each angle, I'm labeling it with the little version of that letter. So across from angle A is little a. Across from angle B, this side is little b. And across from angle C, this side is little c. All right, so the law of sine says that the sine of angle A divided by the length of the side across from it, well, that ratio is equal to the sine of angle B divided by the side across from it. All right? And it even goes a step further to be ultra flexible. It says also that those ratios are also equal to the sine of angle C divided by the side across from it. All right? So really with the law of sines, it's very flexible in that it can use any of the angles and any of the side lengths. And all of these ratios are equal, OK? So if you're working with three out of the four of any of these combinations, you can set up an equation and solve for the missing measure. All right, so let's do an example where we're trying to find an unknown side length. All right, so down below it says find the unknown side length. Notice we're given two angles. We're given one side and we want to find a missing side. So we're giving three pieces of information and we're trying to find the fourth, which is perfect for the law of sines. And also notice this isn't a right triangle, so uh, we can still do the law of sines even though it's not a right triangle. The first thing I like to do is label things that I've given. So I'm given these two angles, so I'm going to label these two angles A and B. And the side across from angle A is going to be little a. Side across from angle B is going to be little b. All right, so we're going to use these two parts of the law of sines, which says the sine of angle A, the sine of 59 degrees, divided by the length of the side across from it, has to be equal to the sine of angle B, sine of 38 degrees, divided by the side length across from it, which is x. And notice, now we have an algebraic equation with an unknown that we can actually solve for x. All right, so let's do that. If we do our cross products, because we have a proportion, we have x times sine of 59 degrees is equal to, do my cross product this way, 35 times sine of 38 degrees. All right. To get x, I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 59 degrees. When I do that, I end up getting this side divided by the sine of 59 degrees. So. At this point, this just becomes calculator work. All right, so pull out your, your little scientific calculator here. 35 times the sine of 38 degrees divided by the sine of 59 degrees. Boom, I get about 25. Let's go to the hundredths, 25.14. All right, so we'll say about 25.14 centimeters. And that is the length of this side right there. All right, so the key with the law of sines is make sure you have those three pieces of information you're looking for, two angles, and at least you need to find one side, you need to be given one side that's across from the angle, and we need to be finding the side across from the other angle. All right, set up your equation, and then you can solve it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I'll see you next time.